Ladies and gentlemen, I am Trotto, and with Christmas passing, there's a lot of new players that got Modern Warfare 3. You're probably going to hop on and want to play some Modern Warfare Zombies, but don't know what's going on, don't know where to start. In today's video, I got a complete beginner's guide to Modern Warfare Zombies. Let's not waste no time. Let's get right to it. Starting off, if you have played DMZ mode from last year's game, this is very similar. The only difference being, there are zombies on the map. Also, there is no PvP in this mode. There are other players on the map. You can join their squad or invite them to join your squad. You can exchange loot with them. You can team up do contracts, but you cannot kill each other. On to the story missions. As of right now, there are four acts. They could add more in the future because act four was just added this season. Basically, each act will have different tiers of missions that you'll have to complete in order to unlock the story mission at the end. When you complete the story mission, you will unlock the cutscene for that act and you'll also unlock the next act's missions. Same thing, different tiers of missions, story mission, so on. Now you do get rewards for these. The harder the mission, usually the better the reward. So as you can see in the tier one, there isn't nothing too crazy, but if we go to like act three here, flawless Ethereum acquisition. That's pretty good. That's something that allows you to go into your game with a triple pack a punch weapon right away so that's an amazing reward look for there are some other good ones ray gun so as you can see completing these missions will also get you rewards and a good bit of xp on to the characters you have the option of going into the world with one of three operators i would recommend getting all three of your operators looted up with large rucksack a kill streak three plate vest a durable gas mask and a self revive kit and X-File with those items so you can continue going into your game with them. And then if you go down with one operator, then you have two more that are still kitted out to go back into the world with. Now the way you will get these items once you're in the world is by completing contracts for the rare items like the large rucksack, juggernaut, three plate, and durable. Usually tier two to tier three contracts will drop those items so you can get them from there or you could buy them from the tier three buy station which is in the hardest zone in the game we'll get to that later on self revive kits they could drop even in tier one from completing contracts so all three tiers can drop you a self revive kit acquisitions and schematics let's start with the acquisition stash this is where all your items that you x file with in your games will be stored now, as you can see i got 163 of 10 because the max items you're supposed to hold are 10 but there is a glitch there is a workaround to allow you to hold unlimited items I'll probably make that in a future video. Let me know if y'all want that. Also, your rewards and purchase items will be here too. Your rewards, this is stuff you get from completed missions in the world. And your schematic crafting. These are craftable items that can be crafted on a cooldown. You got your rarity tools to make your weapons more rare and your crystals, which will allow you to pack a punch your weapons. Pack a punch one, pack a punch two, pack a punch three. As you can see, I don't have some of these unlocked. These are super rare. Can only find them in tier three and i believe in the dark ether as well perks same thing these can all be crafted for the perks it's all three hours all these items have different cooldowns the rare item as you can see as we go up the time the crafting cooldown also goes up for all the perks though it's only three hours for your ammo mods i believe it's also three hours now your wonder weapons are two days these are extremely rare, hard to find. It's going to take you a while farming in that tier 3 and dark ether zone to get these. Classified items can only be found in the dark ether zone. As you can see, I only have the ether blade right now. I still have to get these two in the dark ether zone. Now when you first spawn into the game, you will always spawn in tier 1, somewhere in the edge of the map. It's random every game. Now these light blue markers on your map are your contracts. There are different types of contracts. This is what you will do to get rewards, to get essence, so you can then buy items. Now the easiest contracts to complete, the ones that I would stick to, are your bounties. Eliminate the bounty and delivery cargo. Delivery cargo is super easy. All you're doing is delivering an armored truck to a different area of the map. It's probably the easiest one. Bounty is pretty easy too, you just got to make sure you're in the right tier for which weapon you have. If you don't have pack-a-punch weapons, do not go in tier 2 or tier 3 for tier 2 you're going to want at least a blue or purple rarity weapon that's pack a punch 
once or twice, probably twice to be safe to do effective damage. For tier three, you're gonna want a gold weapon, legendary, triple packed. This is really rough for beginning players, so I would avoid it until you actually get looted up. Now, as you can see, there's a countdown under your map. It starts at 45 minutes every game, and once the 45 minutes hits, you will then have an additional 15 minutes to X-File from the map. During that time, the storm, which spawns randomly in the map, right here, this will begin to expand until it takes over the whole map. Once that 15 minute hits zero, the whole map will be taken over, and if you have not X-Filed, you've lost everything. You are dead. Now on your map, you'll see the outskirts where you land is tier one. This is the easiest level. Once you go in the orange, that's tier two. It's much harder. And tier three is the hardest zone on this map, at least. You can also enter the dark ether, which we'll get into later. Now across the map, you'll see these blue X-File pings. They also spawn randomly. Right here are the normal X-Files. Now these blue ones with the stars are not normal X-Files. These are actually story missions that you unlock by completing the axe. So they are not normal X-Files. They will take you onto a separate map where you will complete the mission for that act. Now you'll also come across vehicles throughout the map. These are going to be your best friends because as you can see the map is massive so you want to find quick ways to navigate. So also across the map you'll see these ammo caches. These come in very handy. Now if you come in with decoy grenades like I do, and I would highly recommend you do because they're basically mini monkey bombs. You throw them, after a second or two the zombies will ignore you. You got about like 5 seconds to do what you want, but the best thing about them is you come to this, boom, got two again. So you basically have infinite monkey bombs. It's pretty OP. The only bad thing is there is a countdown. As you can see I can't. So I believe the countdown is about a minute and then you can reuse it again. but. These are throughout the map, so you'll always have one nearby. Another thing you'll come across a lot are these purple rifts throughout the map. They spawn randomly. It's also a very quick way to navigate throughout the map. So if you hop in it, basically redeploy. Another thing I would highly recommend when you're coming into tier two, tier three, make sure you have self revive kits, especially if you're running solo. You can carry more than one. However much space you have in your rucksack, you can carry that many. But in tier two, I always have at least one. If you go into tier three, I would highly recommend having like three at least because you can go down so easily. Now I mentioned the different tiers of zombies earlier. As you can see, I'm in the orange zone, tier two. You will sometimes get super spinners like this guy. Tier one, you don't have to worry about that at all. Tier two, you do. And the zombies have a little bit more health. Now let's compare that to tier 3. As you can see, when you're in tier 3, this is pretty much all the zombies. All the zombies are super sprinters, so they can run as fast or even faster than you. Especially the hellhounds. The hellhounds, if you're running max speed, are still going to hit you every now and then. The key to staying away from them is, one, having an empty slot for your second gun. And running with your hands I don't right now so I can't show you but even better way having a juggernaut kill streak if you press your right d-pad to hold it this is the fastest sprint speed in the game so I basically always have a juggernaut kill streak not even to use just to navigate through tier 3 because you run so fast As far as weapons, you're going to want to make sure you're using the best weapons possible. I'll list off a couple of the ones that are very good. What I got right now, the tier pistols, get them a Kimbo, and they work very well in tier 3. Some other good options are the M13 assault rifle, and the crossbow, and the grenade launcher. Now, if you're using the grenade launcher, you want to make sure you have PhD flopper perk attached, or else you will damage yourself. But as you can see with these, man, I just melted Disciple, this which is a tanky boss zombie. Now the contracts in this zone are going to be way harder compared to tier 1 and tier 2. 
So I'm gonna do a bounty here, show y'all. Another thing when you're in tier three, there will always be a wonder fizz. It's always in this area. I think there's another one that spawns as well, but this one is always here. And you can buy any of the perks. So if you don't have the perks when coming in, like I don't, go ahead and buy them. Main ones you'll need, Juggernaut, Speed Cola, Stamina Up. They are must have. And like I said, if you're using a grenade launcher or a ray gun, PhD Popper is a must. And let's go do this bounty. Trust me, it is not easy, especially if you're just starting out. You're going to struggle in tier 3. You're going to die a bunch. Let me find this mimic. As you can see, these guys are much tankier than you'll find. But look at this. And he's gone. Even though I struggled there, I promise you, that is much easier than if you don't bring in a meta gun. Like, be, you gotta have some strong weapons if you're gonna take out these bounties in tier 3. Either that, or have a whole squad with you. I normally run solo, though. And when you complete the bounty, or any contract, or war drift like this will spawn, so always be sure to check it and get your loot. I'm gonna take that self-revive. I don't need these items. Now, if you're just starting out, I would not recommend coming in tier 3. You really want to make sure you have legendary weapons, are able to pack a punch them to tier 3 before you come in here. Now, if you look throughout the map, you'll see gun spawns. In tier 3, you can find a gold weapon on the wall. This is not gold, but there's always one. So if you go through and check all of these buy stations in tier 3, you can find you a gold wall weapon. It'll be 5,000 essence. And then you can go on the pack a punch it. Now, the way the pack a punches work in this game, tier 3, which I'm in right now, you can pack a punch to level 1, level 2, and level 3. But in tier 2, you can only do 1 and 2. And in tier 1, you can only do 1. So keep that in mind. And it'll be. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 for the different pack a punch tiers. Another thing you want to keep in mind is your weapon rarity. As you can see, I have gold weapons. Now, it goes anywhere from common to green to blue to purple to legendary. They affect your gun just as much as the pack a punch do. So, don't think you're going to come in with a common gun pack a punch to level 3 and be good. You're not. You also need that gun gold before coming in here. I would say it's equivalent to a Pack-A-Punch. So if you go from like common to blue, that's equivalent to like Pack-A-Punch 1. From that to purple, equivalent to Pack-A-Punch 2 and to legendary. That's equivalent to like a Pack-A-Punch 3. You also want to Pack-A-Punch it on top of that. You're going to need all that extra damage to survive in tier 2 and tier 3. All right, that's it for the guide. I also wanted to mention that I am someone who was a big fan of round-based zombies. I was surprised at how much I'm actually having fun playing this mode. So even if you love round-based zombies, definitely give this a try. I promise you'll have some fun with it. I'm a brand new YouTuber and plan on uploading at least a few videos a week. I also post multiplayer videos and plan on posting some Warzone gameplay as well. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if I helped in any way. I'll catch y'all on the next one.